Good day everyone, it's Caitlin and today we are making summer linens for the Hope Chest. Why yes, we do have the sheets finished. So um, apparently, uh, well I dropped the camera before I got to edit the video and I think it erased the beginning of this video so we're going to go back and kind of talk about what I did at the beginning before I actually have footage. And the other option is that I was like less than a week off COVID by the time I filmed this. It's entirely possible that I thought I filmed the beginning and I didn't. And it has nothing to do with the camera dropping. So anyway, I lost the first bit of footage or I never filmed it at all. I don't actually know which one. So let's kind of let's talk about what we did. So we're not going to talk about the pillowcases because we just missed the first part. So um, if you missed the introduction video last month, we are making uh, bedding. Uh, modern bedding but the, with the historical concept of it being a hope chest so I'm getting married and um, my dad actually made me a hope chest back in college it actually wasn't called a hope chest it's like a little drunk thing and um, has all sorts of things like from my childhood and I've been storing like baby clothes in it and all my stuff from my wedding dress to get stored in there um, and it's always kind of been my plan even back when I was younger that I would make like sheets and bedding um, for when I got married because that's kind of a historical concept in some cultures um, that a woman would do that as kind of she was hopeful for the future and I just never got around to it but you know I'm not married yet so you know go ahead and do it now I suppose and so um, we're gonna make the summer sheet set so I'm gonna have two sheet sets one of uh, cotton sateen and one of linen linen is a lot cooler so it's gonna be great for Texas summers and so that's what we're going to start on first. Um, I purchased black because it's me. Up. I purchased black linen because it is my fiance's favorite color. Um, not sure if that's the best plan for stains, but um, it's better than white, I guess. So um, I just went with it. And so I bought linen that is 108 inches wide. I'm going to go ahead and make the bedding king, or I made the bedding um, king size sheets. But I didn't want to cut off the extra couple of inches because king sheets are usually 112 by 102. And so I actually just cut it the whole 108 inch wide and then folded under the selvage edge once and stitched it there. And then um, instead of cutting it the 112 inches long, of course I needed to add seam allowance. So what I did was I added 5 inches to that. So I cut it 108 by 117 inches instead of, you know, at king size so basically it's all that you actually missed as far as the footage went is me ripping the panels and talking about it how wide it was going to be because the next the first footage I do have is of me turning in the edges and actually doing the sewing so that's really all that was missed but yeah um yeah, you can kind of see the selvage edge there. So like that's the selvage and I just kind of turned it under. So it ends up, it's, it's a little bit longer or wider. Sorry, wider than a king sheet, but it's about as long as a normal king sheet. I just didn't want to have any fabric waste, so I just went ahead and did it that way. It made sense to me, so that's what I did. And it's my sheets and no one's going to care. But um, yeah, that's about all that was missed. Uh, it did take me quite a while to find linen in the 108 uh, width. The other option I considered was about was doing 55 inch wide and having a seam down the middle which would have been more historically accurate because sheets usually did have a seam down in the middle. You didn't um, cut the selvage, you just kind of whipped the selvages together and then when it got the sheet got worn in the middle you would undo that seam, flip it so that what was on the outside is now on the inside and you whip it together so your sheets last longer um, which I very much considered but I'm not doing these by hand I was doing, I was using a machine uh, to sew them and uh, you have to kind of do the whip stitching by hand for it to work. Otherwise you have a seam, a bulky seam in the center of your sheets, which is kind of annoying. And I didn't feel like hand stitching the whole thing on two sheets. So I just figured go ahead and buy the width that I wanted. So these are modern sheets anyway and they're not used for the historic concept. Um, but I really did kind of like the idea of being able to turn them inside out. Um, what I will do is when they do get worn, I can cut down the center fold them in, then I will do the whip stitch on the selvage and just hem in the outside edges. So they're going to last about twice as long as um, what most sheets last for just because I'm going to be doing that concept, the historical concept of turning them and uh, making the fabric last longer basically. 
So anyway, that's about all that was missed. So we will go ahead and continue on with the footage I actually have, which is again, me turning in the edges uh, to be sewn. Ironing in the selvage edge like we discussed. There's a different part of the selvage that, I mean, it's very hard to see on camera, but there is a little bit of a lip um, where it's more tightly woven than the rest of the fabric, and I'm just holding it on that line. down the very edge. We'll come back and do the bottom hem. And we'll do the top hem. And then I can do it all over again for the second sheet. Alright, so I folded in the bottom edge a quarter inch and then three quarters of an inch for an inch total hem. And I've just been kind of stitching it down. somewhere in there. And I'm doing three inches now. Alright, that is going to get stitched down at the very edge. Then I have another um, sheet to do because we're doing two flat sheets. Instead of a fitted sheet and a flat sheet, we're doing two flat sheets. And then we'll work on pillowcases. Pillowcases. So, I'm cutting them however much is left, which I think is 33 inches um, times, or well, I'm it, yeah, um, by 22 inches. And that is how much I have left. That is just about a quarter of a yard. Okay. So I have one pillowcase sewn together and the other half of this one cut. So we're just going to put them together. I decided to do French seams on this, which is to sew it, turn it inside out, and then sew it again. And I chose that because it's easier than felling a seam. And for modern, I can do what I want. And this one end isn't quite even, so I've just been making sure it matches up nicely. So I didn't rip the one end. Alright, I'm going to sew. Basically, I've been just been long end, short end, long end, leaving, of course, the other short end open so that I can put pillow in there. All right, so I have here some vintage knitted uh, lace that I'm just putting on the very edge. There's a nice little you know, part here. I'm just been stitching in between with the black thread, and it works just fine. Here they are finished. So pillowcase one, pillowcase two, one sheet and two sheets. That was actually a lot of fun. I can't wait to do the ones next month too. I mean I feel very accomplished and it's something that I know we're going to use and we're going to use like daily and it kind of makes me happy to know that I put the work in and I did that. Like we're going to sleep on sheets that I made. I think, 
I really just, I love the idea. I love the concept of a hope chest and putting it all together. And yeah, it's not necessarily a hope chest for me because I started it after I got engaged um, and met the man I'm going to marry. But um, I like the concept of it. I really like the idea of a young woman making these things because she's hopeful that one day she'll get married. And um, I mean, I first had this idea when I was a teenager and I just never actually did anything with it. But I really do kind of wish I had done it back when I was a teenager. But better late than never. And I did technically get them done before marriage, so I guess we're all good. Anyway, I just think it's a fantastic concept and I'm very thrilled with how it turned out. Um, can't wait to do the ones next month, that's going to be a lot of fun too. I have some more lace coming in because apparently the stuff that I bought um, wasn't quite enough. I'm like five inches short. Uh, for the pillowcases so I'm buying some more vintage uh, lace so I gotta wait for that to come in before I can actually do those but we got a month so it's okay this will be a very nice summer set and we're gonna need these first anyway because we're getting married in April and I figure I've been calling them the summer sheets and the winter sheets but really this is gonna be like the spring summer and the other one's gonna be fall winter so I'm thinking in March because Springs technically starts in March. March, go ahead and take off the old sheets, put on these, and then we'll replace them with the winter ones in September. And I think that's just going to be our little family tradition. It's going to be a weird family tradition. Most people don't change out their bedding. And it's my house, so I can do whatever I want. If I want to uh, manage it like a 19th century household, I can absolutely do that. Um, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't do it entirely. I mean, I kind of like my Roomba and. I don't know if I want to be on the floor with a scrub brush mopping, um, but within reason, maybe do some of the things that they would have done. But that is basically the sheet set. So we have two pillowcases and two sheets all ready to go. These are the ones, again, we're going to use first because we're getting married in April. So um, these will be ready for use in a few months. and. Then we get the winter ones done and I can replace them in September. But I got a while before I actually need them. But anyway, thank you so much for joining me today as we made our trousseau set, our hope chest linens, our first set of hope chest linens anyway. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe to the channel. Click that little bell notification so you can be notified anytime I upload a new video. And have a fantastic week and I'll see you back here on Monday.